Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm here with Arthur Kamara. Arthur is, the list begins, co-creator of CryptoKitties, co-founder of Dapper Labs, and director of product at Dapper Labs. Did I get it right? Yes, you got it right. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> thanks for, thanks so much for being with me here today, um, Arthur. I, I, I love uh, what you guys do at Dapper Labs. Being from Vancouver and you guys being headquartered here is super inspiring for me to sit down and talk with you and some of your colleagues in the past as well. Um, and so first, let's just get a bit of a summary. You know, uh, what what is your history and connection and relationship with the world of I don't know what we're going to, let's call it web three yeah. um, to keep things broad uh, for now. And, and let's like dive into NFTs a bit more specifically later on. Yeah. So uh, we start, I started with Dapper Labs um, uh, in the world of web three, right? We started experimenting um, back in, in, in 20, uh, 15 we were experimenting with, with Bitcoin already. And then in 17, we, we ended up, um, starting to uh, see some interesting projects like CryptoPunks. Yeah. And we got very inspired by that. Um, we wanted to build uh, things in crypto. We didn't quite know exactly how to, how to build um, things that people would love. And, and, and uh, that's where I started. I started um, exploring with them the, the possibilities. Um, we, we ended up um, uh, building on this idea of um, it's not enough to teach people about crypto mm -hmm. and the benefits of decentralization. You got to let them play with the technology. Right. And, and that led us to, to try to build something fun with, with crypto. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. And Ethereum was, was uh, growing quite a lot in 17 and, and we were uh, excited about what we could build with smart contracts. And we decided mm -hmm. to, to build uh, an experiment that, that was entertaining, that was fun, that was more like a game. And, uh, and that's where we, we started with um, CryptoKitties, yeah. uh, right? So my, my, my story begins in Web3 begins with CryptoKitties. Uh, so, we, and at that point, CryptoKitties wasn't the first NFT, but it seems to be it was like, was it, was it the one that really kind of launched, not mass adoption, but you know, people really got into it. But, but uh, CryptoPunks had existed already at that point, is that right? Yeah, that's right. It, it had existed for a little while, uh, mm -hmm. a few months. Um, so, but it, it didn't have that name and okay. it didn't have any, any standard uh, implementation associated right. uh, with CryptoPunks, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, CryptoKitties was the one that broke out of that mini bubble that was uh, CryptoPunks, yeah. right? And that was able to reach um, an audience that didn't know much about crypto, didn't know anything about uh, yeah um crypto collectibles or anything like that so um yeah it was the first to to popularize uh, nfts right yeah. it was the first to implement the um erc 721 standard which was the the standard on ethereum that that uh, Dieter proposed um uh, for for non-fungible tokens at the time fungible tokens were a big thing right, right. We, we had a lot of um fungible tokens being launched and and um, ICOs, initial coin uh, offerings being um, launching all the time, but no, but, but not uh, a concept of uh, NFTs yeah. uh, that was standard um, on Ethereum, right? So, and so Dieter uh, is a colleague of yours, yeah. a, a co-founder with you, uh, right? right? Um, CTO of Dapper Labs, yeah. Yeah, and so, so you say there were fungible tokens at that time, um, and then you guys come in and kind of popularize non-fungible tokens. Um, can you just clarify in how do, how do you define an NFT and how do you explain that when you are, I don't know, you're at a party or you're talking to your cousins um, and they're like, what do you do again? <laughs> <laughs> what is, what are you, what are you into? How do you, how do you break that down simply? Yeah, I think I try to um, give an example that is uh, physical, right? That is mm -hmm. close to their, their lives. So, uh, you know, the same way that, uh, most things in our lives are are uh, unique, right? You have a unique object that you love, a unique piece of art. Uh, you have a, your house or your car that is very unique to you. Maybe yeah. you customized it. Um, those are not like uh, so, so. Those are, are are very special because they are very unique. Yeah. So NFTs are the digital version of that, right? Yeah. Uh, unique pieces of digital content. Yeah. Um, that that are scarce yeah. uh, by default, and they're they're provably scarce, right? And 
Um, so that that's usually how I get people to understand uh, a little bit. And uh, I usually talk about how um, we are growing to become more and more digital. Our digital identities are becoming more and more important to us. Right. We care more about um, our digital presence, how we look, how we yeah. other people per perceive us. Right. Yeah. So digital ownership uh, becomes very important too in that world. Right. Um, in, in a world where people pay attention to who you are, what you um, what you show to the world, what you own. Um, in a non-physical way, yeah. NFT has become a, a, a key central part of, yeah. of that story. Okay, interesting. Yep. Okay, I like that. So when CryptoKitties launches, it becomes very popular. Um, so why is that important for the story of kind of Web3 or crypto? What did CryptoKitties help kind of the, the movement of Web3? How, how did it help and where did it take us to? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think it starts with... Um, getting people to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even before we launched CryptoKitties, when we launched like a, an alpha within the community, the Ethereum community, um, we got, we were very colorful. We were very uh, funny. We, right. we, we had a, a, an interesting product that, that people didn't really need to understand the crazy, uh, uh, difficult cryptography concepts uh, that Vitalik was often talking about uh, in order to access and, and yeah. play with, right? So it became uh, very noticeable mm -hmm. uh, and, and very accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the first thing, like, um, you know, even before we launched, like I said, um, uh, as soon as we showed that to the community, the crypto community at the time, everybody wanted to uh, get involved. Um, it was very organic from that perspective. Yeah. And we built a a mini community of a few hundred people, 600 people uh, or so, even before we launched CryptoKitties, of, of just people who were interested because it was colorful, because it was funny, because it was fun. Yeah. Was, this on, was this on Discord or on Twitter or where did this community actually happen or occur? Yeah, initially we, we had a website and we had a Telegram group. Okay. Um, and after that 600 mark, uh, the Telegram group was just impossible to follow because, yeah. you know, there were yeah. too many people talking at once and yeah. they didn't have a way to... Um, we didn't have a way to manage that, mm -hmm. uh, the topics, right? Yeah. There were too many topics happening at the same time. Uh, and that's when we decided to shift to Discord way ahead of uh, a lot of the projects today. It was not nothing um, that was usual at the time. Oh, we just saw that as, a, as an, an opportunity to openly um, classify topics. Yeah. And uh, it was very similar to Slack. We use Slack internally yeah. um, in the company, but Slack as an open group isn't very effective, right? right. They have, um, they're very closed off or very right. focused on organizations. Yeah. Um, so we, we looked at Discord and I was like, huh, maybe this could work. Yeah. And, and we jumped to Discord, but yeah, um, you know, in, in the early days, it was, it was still that accessibility. I think that yeah. fact that, that it was fun to, uh, to use and play with, um, the fact that, the fact that you could breed cats on chain, that was yeah. very novel. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I think that got people's attention. And by giving getting people's attention, we got new people to uh, uh, give crypto a chance and, and get deeper and try to understand. Wait, wait a minute. How did they breed? Oh, they have genes on chain. Oh, wait. How can I be sure that um, you know uh, uh, this is fair? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. oh, how how can I be sure that this is that the kitty I'm buying? is actually mine and all of these questions that right. popped up in in people's mind after the fact after they got involved uh, are really yeah. important for a really important concepts right yeah. in in understanding uh, web3 in general today but um, even crypto at the time so i thought that's what what uh, crypto uh, crypto kitties innovated at first right, right. I, rem I remember hearing you speak at an event and you had said you told this funny story where you if i remember correctly you had a crypto you were at an event uh, maybe you were launching CryptoKitties and someone had said like, uh, hey, so-and-so, stop trying to breed with my cat or something like that. Do you, know, do you know what I'm talking about? Can you tell that story? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So this was not our event. It was ETH Waterloo uh, okay. in 2017. So this was the alpha of CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties was not launched yet, but it, we were uh, testing uh, a version of it uh, on Testnet yeah. uh, uh, on Ethereum. So we, we showed up to this event. It was a hackathon. And uh, our intention with that hackathon was to uh, not only join and participate, uh, we were trying to win the hackathon because we wanted to talk about CryptoKitties on stage. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, but also we wanted to promote CryptoKitties within the Ethereum community. And at the time, the Ethereum community was very, like I said, focused on uh, fungible tokens, focused on financial applications, um, and uh, other things that were not entertainment, right? So we we uh, went to this event and we try to um, spread the word and and get um, people involved in. Uh, with our community, um, we invited people to join the Telegram group. We we invited people to join our. We had a little website where you could see the kitties and 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 try to breed them. Um, <laughs> on testnet, it was free, so okay. uh, we also adjusted uh, the kitties so the whole operation was very fast. Nowadays, or, or after we created the product, the kitties they get slower and slower okay. the more you breed. Yeah. Um, but at the time, we we left that at, at ten blocks, so very quick, uh, very quick uh, operations. And um, we invited people to uh, test it out and 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 breed uh, kitties and try to find uh, other kitties to to uh, uh, match with theirs and 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 people had fun during that event, right? <laughs> uh, but one of the kitties I remember um, was the the sire of like sixty eight kitties, so it was like breeding with everybody, right? Right. right. And and trying to breed with everybody. And, and there was somebody <laughs> who said that on on uh, on the the group that we set up on the telegram group uh the hey stop trying to breed with my kitty because that 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 person was really determined uh determined to to breed a lot of kids yeah <laughs> there's so many parallels in life that can be pulled from that analogy yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> like how inappropriate is that is that acceptable in the world of crypto like <laughs> so many things to be discussed okay yeah, that's that's excellent it is it is so yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we look at um, the history of CryptoKitties, what um, you guys had, uh, you know, a big challenge where you, I don't know, you broke Ethereum is what people say. Um, and then out of that, uh, if I understand correctly, Flow Blockchain was birthed to solve kind of some of the challenges around Ethereum. Um, can we tie the journey of, um, of Dapper relation to Flow Blockchain and then um, the project that you've worked on, uh, MBA Top Shop. So what is MBA Top Shop and how does that kind of fit into this picture? Yeah, sounds good. So, you know, when we launched CryptoKitties, it, uh, it was way more successful in a way and faster than what we had anticipated and in ways that we, we didn't anticipate as well. So yeah. what I mean by that is um, after this event that I just talked about, we went to uh, we went ahead and built the first version on mainnet. We took a month uh, or, or two to like really uh, shape up the product. Can you and, just explain mainnet versus testnet? Yes. Uh, so mainnet is uh, where the actual the the Ethereum transactions actually happen, where um, Ethereum actually um, uh, performance operations on, on the blockchain. The mm -hmm. testnet version is a developer version mm -hmm. of that so that you could build products and test it out uh, ahead of time. It's free. You can get uh, free um, ether uh, through a faucet to get um, to, to play with with the so it's like a practice right? it's like a, a practice area it's like the rehearsal for the real right. deal it's like a sandbox right yeah. and it it doesn't have the real meaning of, right. of mainnet uh because people are not putting real money right yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. it's a and it's a slower environment it has less activity so mm -hmm. you can uh it, it's really a sandbox that you can be um a little bit more free and and, and play right play with the technology without you know um, real blockchain uh, yeah. consequences. So we, we spent a month or two like, um, fixing bugs and finalizing the product and we launched on, uh, on mainnet. And it's funny cause we had an internal, uh, bet on, on how long it would take to sell the number one, uh, kitty. Mm -hmm. And the number one was, was a very expensive kitty at the time. And, and we thought it would take quite a while for, you mm -hmm. know, for, public to see CryptoKitties and for that to be adopted and for uh, the CryptoKitties, uh, CryptoKitty number one to be sold. And uh, everybody was wrong because um, it got sold within uh, a week of the project <laughs> launching. And, and do so you, the first what was weekend, the approximate dollar value at the time? Do you remember? I think at the time it was about $150,000. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was nuts. And, 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 but at the same time, it's a very, very valuable kitty. I think it was right. a bargain uh, because it, it is a very important piece of uh, uh, Web3 history now. Right. And um, 
I believe the person never sold that kitty. Uh, oh, really? To be honest, and they they still hold it. I I might be wrong, but I gotta check. Uh, Do you know who they are? Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. So we we it was very successful very quickly in terms of like getting the effect that we wanted, which was to attract uh, mainstream and uh, folks who were not necessarily involved in in the space, and to get people um, uh, to try. Uh, the te technology and try um, getting a crypto kitty and, and, mm -hmm. and breeding, but um, it was way more than we could handle, um, right. to be honest. Um, so immediately we saw, uh, you know, transactions taking very very long. We saw uh, the gas prices went uh, became super expensive, uh, and at the time Ethereum was in a place where they couldn't handle the volume. Right, um, right. there were. There weren't enough uh, nodes uh, in the network, uh, so um, I remember that you know people were trying to buy kitties and breed kitties all at the same time, and it was taking up, uh, it was taking over a third uh, of the capacity of the entire network wow. globally. Right, wow. and uh, people needed at its peak, people needed to um, wait for twenty four hours to do anything right. uh, on CryptoKitties or anything on Ethereum yeah. for that matter. Uh, Cause every, every transaction, it's a very fair system because every transaction is equal. Right. right. So it doesn't matter if somebody was trying to um, breed a kitty or do something else on yeah. Ethereum. Um, and, and the pending transactions were like in the thousands and, and, wow. and, and this was with only a few thousand users right. on CryptoKitties. Uh, which was mind blowing to us, right? The experience was, if you think about it, the experience was horrible despite this uh, uh, apparent success. Right. Because a, a user would come in, try to uh, get a kitty, mm -hmm. and uh, the first thing that they would have to understand is, oh, I, I need to download this Chrome extension called MetaMask, right? Mm -hmm. And then they needed to get some ether, which was another uh, difficult process. They needed to like apply. Uh, to, to get a Coinbase account and yeah. potentially get uh, send their passport and that type of thing. Uh, they, they, they were also backlogged and, and clogged. Right. Um, that would take a few days. Um, and then after they got their Ether, um, they would come back, uh, hopefully, uh, right? They yeah. would come back and they would try to buy a kitty or breed a kitty and it would take 24 hours yeah. uh, for that to happen. Or even if it's, you know, even at one hour, that that's a horrible experience, right? Yeah. So, uh, and people were still doing it, which was so mind blowing. Right. right? They really wanted to. They eh? really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So on but one hasn't, end, hasn't that, aside from the time frame in which it takes, that experience on buying something on, in crypto hasn't changed. Like you still got to go through many, many steps to get the opportunity to actually purchase something. Don't you see that as a problem? Like, like five years later, we're still kind of fighting the same battle? Yeah, I see that as a problem. That's a, that problem doesn't exist on, on, on Top Shot, for example, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute. But, you know, we, we, we worked to solve that problem. Yeah. Uh, we were like, all right, there's serious net, uh, network issues here. Yeah. Um, we, you know, Ethereum is not ready for consumer adoption. Mm -hmm. And we saw how much people wanted it, right? There was a strong, the strong market demand. Uh, people wanted to breathe the kitties, but at the same, so, right. so there was a market for it, but no uh solution for consumer uh applications um and and we were like all right we we can do better than that and, yeah. and there were other issues with um ethereum as well like uh the first the very very first contract on crypto kitties we we had a bug and we couldn't fix that bug mm. we had to swap the entire contract refund the initial users right um we were lucky because we found it in in the very first couple of days but um you know, we, we couldn't upgrade the contract. We couldn't uh, iterate on the product. And we're like, what platform, like this platform is not good enough for developers either because right. you can't, you can't um, iterate and, and build a product quickly, right? Um, immutability is great, um, but we also need to give a path for developers to find the right yeah. product. And um, so with CryptoKitties, we, we, we noticed that from the start and, and, we wanted to build a better network that could one um, address the consumer application demand, and number two, um, be good for developers, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's where Flow, um, the, the concept of Flow, was born. And 
and we it's really meant to address those two things and right. and, and i think it does it uh really well and then the other uh issue that we saw was this whole onboarding process that you mentioned yeah um, it's still not great on Ethereum, um, and uh, we decided to build a better, much better experience with with Dapper, uh, and we've gone through a couple of iterations of that. One on Ethereum, uh, and one, um, and now on Flow. Uh, and we, a, a user on Dapper Wallet, they could get an NFT without having to install anything. It's just a username password. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, UX and that's that's a lot more convenient uh, yeah. for for users. Yeah. Um, and then they can over time uh, learn all those concepts and say, oh, you know what? I actually prefer um, to uh, hold my own seed phrase. Right. They don't have to see all of the those complicated uh, seed words right as their first experience. You know, uh, right in front of them as their first experience on crypto. So yeah. we think they could be slowly. Uh, uh, onboarded onto those concepts over yeah, time. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so the onboarding process with NBA Top Shop, Top Shot is um, much more sensible. Um, can you kind of break down what is NBA Top Shop and why do you think, or maybe maybe you don't, but but is NBA Top Shop important for the mass adoption of uh, crypto or NFTs or Web three beyond kind of this unique group of people who are willing to take the pain? of um, you know, going through the, the wallet experience and, and, and all of that type of stuff. Yeah, 100%. Um, so NBA Top Shot was born out of the, so, so with CryptoKitties, we got a lot of visibility. We got a lot of yeah. uh, interesting uh, people uh, excited about uh, NFTs. And we partnered up with the NBA because we, we, we've always tried to build things that, that are sort of like, um, in the extremes of what's possible with the technology, very different experiences. Right. So after CryptoKitties, we didn't want to build another animal breeding right. <laughs> uh, application. We wanted to build something very different. Yeah. And NBA Top Shot is uh, very different than that. Uh, NBA Top Shot is the first time that people can collect um, sports highlights, uh, basketball highlights um, as uh, digital collectibles. Right. So if you think of trading cards and how this is so uh, such a large um, industry in, in the physical world. There's nothing like it in the in the digital space, right. and it's not only uh, analogous to that, but also it's something new that you couldn't do in in print because you can't have video you, and you can't have the live action yeah. um, uh, in print. So, so having the ability to collect digital um, highlights, NBA uh, highlights, was very very exciting for mm-hmm. the fans, right? Uh, and, and the NBA is a, a large market. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, there are a lot of uh, NBA fans out there, uh, over a billion uh, NBA fans in the wow. world, which is crazy at, at yeah. varying levels of uh, fandom. Sure. And we saw that as like a great opportunity to expose the te- technology to uh, a billion people, right? Yeah. And uh, NBA Top Shot was extremely successful at that as well, because as soon as we presented a product that was so uh, appealing to that audience, like people who loved basketball, who loved um, uh, trading, and, yeah. and, and who thought that, who loved collecting, right? Um, and who loved the sport. Um, we saw uh, a lot more, like exponentially more yeah. uh, folks uh, coming to Web3, right? Uh, so if you asked a, a, um, an NFT uh, collector, um, hey, what was your first NFT? Chances are that an NBA Top Shot will be the answer. Yeah. Um, with CryptoKitties, I, I mentioned in the first week, we had tens of thousands of people um, who wanted to get involved. Mm-hmm. With with Top Shot, you know, over time we got over a million accounts. So wow. that's a it was a definitely a leap in terms of the number of people we could onboard yeah. um, uh, to Web three in general, right? Yeah. So what, what do you see, and, and we'll maybe end with this question. So NFTs, uh, you know, we see NFTs, I think primarily in the space of art today uh, and around collectibles. Where do you see NFTs in the future? What, what, like, what do you envision? What do you think could happen? Like, where does your mind go when you think, wow, like that, that probably will happen one day in, in five or 10 or 20 years? Yeah, that's that's a, a great question. I, I see blockchain and NFTs as sort of like this new medium 
where you can create things that are not possible yeah. outside of of that medium. Um, and it's really hard to predict exactly what it, what those things will be. Yeah. And one one example of that might be you couldn't have predicted. Um, 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 like you couldn't have predicted soap operas before the television was right. invented, yeah. you know? Um, so that's, the a good, that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the technology sort of like enables new creativity, human creativity. Yeah. So one thing that I um, really like to, to think about is like, what are some of the things that smart contracts enable um, with collectibles, with NFTs that yeah. have not even been uh tried yet yeah um so with crypto kitties for the first time you could take an asset that was um unique and scarce and create more assets like breathe them which right. was very unique yeah right um and there there are other uh things like that that people uh, end up creating so uh you might have heard of this project on ethereum uh generative dungeons uh, yeah. for example uh they are it's kind of like a game uh but each nft instead of being um a an artwork, it's a level, right? And there are generative levels and people can play the NFT. Right. So um, I like the idea of thinking about which verbs we can add to the vocabulary of NFTs uh, beyond buying and selling, right? With okay. kitties, you could breed them, okay. right? Uh, with uh, generative uh, dungeons, you can play them okay. and you can get rewards, right? Yeah. So what other verbs can we add? And, yeah. and it's more of a philosophical, creative question. I like that. But... That's such a helpful way to think, though, when you think about the innovation around NFTs. Yeah. yeah what kind of, I've never heard anybody explain that before. Right. Um, what other verbs can we add to the utility, I guess, of NFTs? Right. Eh? And I think that, that, that creates a bunch of um, doors that you can open and, and, yeah. and try to explore them creatively with new... Uh, art or new concepts or new right. uh, ideas, business ideas that that haven't been tried before. Yeah. Um, of course, you could, uh, you know, there there are many opportunities still within the same uh, verbs and, and lots of ways to uh, uh, monetize, commercialize, uh, build interesting products right. within this space that we've discovered. Yeah. But I'm really excited about trying to think of new ways to expand the the domain. Of, right of NFTs beyond what, oh, what we found. That's yeah. fascinating. I love that. That's great. Um, Arthur, it's been super excellent to talk to you to kind of understand the history and the landscape of where NFTs come from, uh, where they came from, and where maybe they're going today. The verbs, what other verbs can we add to the language of NFTs is a fascinating way to think yeah. about this. I love that. I'm going to think about that. Um, that's really helpful um, and kind of gets your mind going in a creative way. That's great. Thanks so much for being with me here today. Thank you so much. Thank you.